Okay, so of course I immediately thought of um, a few additional things that I'd like to show you. And uh, this tutorial is going to demonstrate how you can use the technical view to produce what uh, I'm calling a real-time Make 2D drawing. Uh, you all know the Make 2D command in Rhino. It's very, um, like, uh, it's kind of the command, right, for making drawings. So we select the geometry, we might adjust some things here. We hit Make 2D, and let's go to the top view. Zoom extents. We're not seeing anything. Oh, there it is up there. Okay. So, and um, we have this. And not everything's showing properly, but that's just part of Make 2D, right? Sometimes we have to, uh, maybe we need to intersect here so that we get a better drawing. But I want to show you how you can use the technical view to also produce similar results on the fly. So the technical view um, we can uh, find here. And um, by default, it's not going to look really great. Um, you might get something like this. And um, so how would we make this more useful? Uh, if we come to the pull down here, the drop down, select display options, um, if we want to make this, let's say, a real time make 2D, um, here are the settings that I would start with. Um, first off, I would make the background a solid color, and I would make that solid color white. So if it's light gray by default, um, click, uh, come in, adjust the color to white. And already this is looking better. Um, if your drawing is quite complicated, you, you probably don't want the hidden lines on. So I'm going to click off show hidden lines, hit OK. All right, so now we have um, what I'm calling a, a, a real-time Make 2D, but it's not particularly um, engaging yet. There are a few things that we could do to, to make this better still. So if we come back into the display options, and again, you can always find these by just typing options, these settings by typing options. If you don't find it uh, at first, you can come down to view, and you just want to find the all of the display mo modes are here. And we want to find um, the one that we're interested in, in, in this case, technical. All right, so here in technical, what else uh, would we do? Um, we would, if we double click this, um, this arrow next to objects, we get more options. And let's come to curves. Uh, curves, the curves, what's, uh, curves will, um, determine the line weight for uh, options in your scene. Uh, or I'm sorry, curves in your that you draw on the scene. Let's not deal with that yet. Lines determine will determine how um, various uh, technical uh, line the lines that the that the technical view uh, produces on its own. Um, the line the lines. Um, the lines option here will uh, is where we adjust these. So um, everything is set to one by default, at least uh, here in my Rhino. Uh, the, I think the thing that I could quickly do is I could start adjusting the silhouette line width, right? So now um, anything that is um, silhouetted will uh, become a darker line weight. And that might actually be enough to start with. So um, so now I have, um, this is a much uh, better drawing. Now you'll see there are moments here where these, um, where these particular volumes are intersecting the ground plane and uh, you might want a silhouette line here, uh, but it's not producing that, right? Because the silhouette of the object goes through. Uh, if we um, take these guys and intersect them with the um, intersect them, um, we are now seeing darker lines. And that's because if we go back to options under curves, so it, it generates curves when you do the intersection operation. And I have set uh, under the under objects, right, um, in curves, the curve width to be the same as the silhouette width. Um, now, any curve that I draw will also have that width, 
right? So, um, so we're kind of stuck with that one line weight for this, but, um, but it can be really handy nonetheless. Now I could use this with, um, I could use this with my layouts, right? Now what's happening here? I want to go back to the top. Actually, let's let's look at a few more things here. Um, so this is great if we just want a line drawing for, say, a diagram. We can also do a couple of other things here under technical view. Um, let's say we want to show um, we want to show some tone. There are a couple of ways that we could do that. We can change the lighting method. Maybe by default it will be set to scene lighting. Um, if we hit OK, nothing will happen. But if we go to shadows and turn the shadows on, okay, now we can see that it's actually using the scene lighting. And, um, and I showed you in an earlier, earlier tutorial how you might adjust these settings. Uh, again, if we go to the rendering uh, tab here and come down, uh, we have the sun on, the sun needs to be on, and uh, the skylight, turning the skylight on and off will give you give you uh, slightly different effects, so you get more um, you more just it's just line and shadow with sun on. But if you turn on the skylight, then you're getting more tone. Um, there's another rendering um, rendering style which you may not use that often, but which is handy called Arctic, and basically this is ambient occlusion. And what ambient occlusion does is it's a way of rendering something without lights that still uh, suggests depth. And as surfaces get nearer to one another, like as this cube, for example, gets nearer to the plane, uh, it begins to cast a um, darken the surface that it's getting close to, right? So it's a distance-based way of suggesting proximity. And it produces very even results, which can be very nice for diagrams. Um, it would be nice to pair this with lines. So to do that, we could um, go back to technical. And, um, and this is looking pretty nice with the shadows. And of course, we could um, come into the sun settings and you know adjust where those shadows are being cast on the fly if we wanted to. Let's cancel that. But we could also use this ambient occlusion method and if we come to, uh, if we go back to display options and change the lighting scheme for the technical view from scene lighting to ambient occlusion, now we're getting this very even way of, um, of rendering things. And it's again this distance based mode. So if I draw a new object in here, I can, um, you know, as this gets further away from other things, it goes lighter. And as it gets closer to other things, then there's tone and, um, and a kind of occluding shadow that gets uh, generated by Rhino. So again, for diagrams, you know, this is a super quick way of, of generating, um, generating a drawing. And you should be able to use um, color uh, let's see if I can um, let's see if I can do that. Let's see if I can put something in here with color. Uh, I'll try a sphere. Let's generate a sphere. Okay, and this sphere, if we go to properties, uh, the display color by layer, and let's see, it's material uh, default layer material. Let's use a new material custom. Okay, and let's change the color of this object. Change it to green. It didn't change. I want it to be green. There we go. Let's try that. Okay. Now this thing has this custom material. So that's not working. Let's go back to options and see if I can get this to shade objects. Nope. Let me pause the video and see if I can figure this out. Okay, figured it out. So let's go back. We want this guy, um, which has a custom color, which is green, to show up. And if we want that custom color to be displayed in this um, ambient occlusion setting in the technical view, 
uh, we go to options or display options um, here in the technical view we want to come down to shading settings we want to make sure that shade objects is selected and then we gave it a custom material right so we want to select rendering material okay now this shows up now if we let's say we wanted a custom line color if we um, so now this guy is being shown in the material color which is great so we could make some sort of we could even make a diagram on the fly if we wanted let's say we will do this very crudely but let's say we make an arrow and have this make a planar surface and take both of these things and then change this to this um, custom material so if we gave this material here it, here it is to the screen material okay cool so we could make a uh, we could make a diagram on the fly here um, which is pretty cool um, could make a 3d area uh, arrow extrude surface extrude uh, not the surface extrude surf kind of like that there we go and we want to make sure that this is also here's where it would just be better to put all of this uh, stuff on one layer uh, change object layer and then give this layer that material that we're interested in and then everything should now start to have that material right so we could have a, um, a custom or a, an on-the-fly diagram and then uh, we wouldn't have to go through the process of using make 2d and of course you know this is great this is the ambient occlusion view um, we could also uh, test the rendered view now let's see if we want not ambient occlusion we want shadows we could use scene lighting and then we get shadows um, but maybe for a diagram the ambient occlusion is uh, looking a little bit better uh, so we could also include this in our um, could also include this in a detail right so if we wanted to we could begin to uh, we could come in here and we could change the view to perspective where is it uh, set view perspective and now we could change this to the technical view and we could zoom in and we could actually print this directly from Rhino uh, we could also then of course pair this with other drawings so, so I'm just going to make a new detail detail add like this it's defaulting to the top we could um, maybe we want to use the geometry could change this to technical uh, now we have two views um, maybe we want to plan I have all of the drawings hidden right now so I'm going to hit show and now I have um, this drawing that we were looking at earlier so I could come back to this page and I could come over and show this drawing. See, I don't like the having this hatch in the section for this particular drawing. So I could turn that away. And uh, maybe I'd like even a more immersive view here. Let's kind of zoom in on this. So I could come in and do something like this right um, and I could just print this now you'll notice that when I print this hit control P um, I don't want to see that active so control P this is an 11 by 17 and uh, so we need to make it a letter sized and portrait format and um, let's do the, the whole layout there we go not extents that's great and you'll notice that um, we have lines describing the details uh, by default now these are on the default layer because this is the uh, layer that I've been 
had it active. So if I turn off the default, it looks like this one is on a different layer. You might want a layer for details, um, you know, just its own layer. Um, by default, you'll probably put them on the default layer. I'll just go ahead and move these to, de to the default layer. Uh, but also by default, if we look at the properties and the um, and the print width, uh, by default a detail will always start with um, no print width. So it, it uh, defaults to not having any print width. If we come back to this object, if we wanted one of these to have a print width, we could come back here and we could either select by layer or we could you know give it a line weight so that when we printed it control p now you can see that this actually has a line weight so but by default and probably typically you're not going to want these details to have a um, to show up and print so we want to select at the bottom here no print for that um, but hopefully looking at this um, at the technical viewport in more detail gives you some ideas about how you might uh, more quickly generate uh, diagrams and you know it works really well with uh, with all sorts of things here so the uh, the last thing I want to remind you of is that um, you know this might be something that you want to take into Photoshop or into um, InDesign as an image file uh, we can print we could print this from here, if we don't want to put it on a layout, we if we want to print it, uh, landscape, and uh, let's set this to image file. Uh, make sure that you have a high enough resolution, and this is popping in nicely. It's just the viewport, so if you have it framed nicely in the viewport, that works. Or you could always uh, drag a, a window around it, hit enter, and and grab it that way. So, um, and then if we print it as an image file, it will, um, it, at a sufficient resolution, it will be useful for, uh, for other programs. So again, as I think of other things to show you, I will, uh, I'll make additional tutorials, um, but this seemed um, like worth showing. So um, thank you and um, see you in studio.